Forgotten Soldier. The Forgotten Soldier is by Guy Sajer. All right. This is a book. Um, it's an old book. I read this a long time ago. But it, it, it's, it's relevant. And I recommend it. This is a book. The author was... Um, He's actually French. He's Alsatian, but his mom is half German. And so in World War II, when Germany took over um, France, he's in that border region, and he he joins the German army. He 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 tries to get into the Luftwaffe. He's briefly in Rudel's squadron for like the first page. And then he, but he doesn't make it for the, he, he, do, he doesn't pass the flight, whatever. So he ends up in the German army and he's sent to, to the Eastern Front early on uh, in his career, which is in 1942. And um, the slowest part of the book's going to be, at the beginning, the first hundred or so pages, just because, like a lot of war stories, where it establishes itself, and also, he hasn't made it to where he ends up in the in the elite unit of the German army. Uh, he volunteers right like right after like the fall of Stalingrad, and uh, around the, this time frame, and they hear about. Stalingrad and what it all means and um but aside from that he wants to be get into a elite unit so he joins the Gross Deutschland and that this is the unit he's with for the rest of the war and he fights on the eastern front for the duration of the war and if you know much about the this war he's in he 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 goes through none of the real glory years but all the um years of retreat and so from there he fights at the battle of kursk and it, it's, it's going to be all retreat um from here so it's a unique story i mean he, he's he's half french half german he's with the german army it's um i mean he's mostly french and his german he says is not good and other people think he's some kind of um like a like a Walloon or something, some kind of vo like a Belgian or French volunteer with like um, but he's not with the the these volunteer foreign like SS units and stuff. He's in the German army in the in the Gross Deutschland is his unit, which is is an elite um like tank formation. It's one of the the most elite German units and is known for fighting on the Eastern Front. And th this book has some detailed combat. Like, it is the heaviest... Um, th this is like a soldier's eye view. And it's not... It's very different than, say, books written by a historian or like a book by a general. Those books tend to be very dry. And you, a lot of times you can read read these books, and it's a lot of numbers and things. And th this one is very much uh, it. It really is intense uh, combat, and it's one of the most entertaining books. Like a similar book might be like um, with the old breed. I brought this up not too long ago by Eugene Sledge. 
because it's a book that there's a ton of he's with the first marine division uh my old division and he's he's with the old breed the the you that book get, get, got a little boring just in terms of they you know it's one engagement after the next of just combat against uh, J the japanese and it's heavy combat and it's just a, a bloody thing you know but but there's only um af after hundreds of pages you know sometimes that can get uh like the same thing over and over again i guess or it, it get kind of boring to me i, I don't want to just read action sequences but this book is so there's so much in, in it and you get the impression that this guy's war experiences i mean he probably could could have written multiple books it, I mean, it's, it's the most interesting stuff um, from one thing to the next. But all the, the combat sequences are extremely graphic. And I mean, I read I read this book after I, I, re, I, re, I first got this book actually when I was a teenager and my mom my mom and my dad got it to me for christmas and uh along with i was really into world war 2 um as a kid and i always liked wars but my parents got me this book for christmas along with stephen ambrose's d day history which i didn't really like but i really liked this book uh quite a bit and I've given it to other people on, on Christmas uh, since then. But I, I read it and it, it meant a lot to me. And then I read it. I read it after I got back from Iraq the second time. And I'm I was like, uh, like shaking. <laughs> like what, what towards the end of the end of the book, like I, just the combat is, is, is so intense and so realistic. And so, and, you know, so much of uh i mean like I, I i was i was reading it and just the intensity of it like i was like shaking while while reading it and this is after i i mean it's very it's a very good book I, i've given it i i i gave it to a, a a friend of mine who said that he'd he'd like shared it at like va counseling or, or so, sessions or something like therapy sessions or something like group I forgot what he said, but but the the book came up. The book is helpful to people, and the book. A lot of this book is uh, is in Ukraine, and so it's 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 going across the Eastern Front a good a good bit, just a, from that curse kind of area, and then they're going to retreat, um, pretty much across that whole thing. And, and and it comes up a lot. Like he's always bringing up. I I was just reading this again, and I was just thinking about like, wow, how much um, how relevant all this is, and how, I mean, how colorful of a book it really is. And then there's so much in it about like the Ukrainian soil and and so, like if uh, the landscape and like what it means, like this vast. Uh, he meditates on it quite a bit. And even like, there's so much in the book of like, they'll they'll hear a voice and it, it it's is it are they speaking Russian or Ukrainian? Is it is it an angry Russian song? Is it a friendly Ukrainian song? Is it is it and, and there's a lot on this and then the he makes a lot of that the Ukrainians were so helpful and like it, it's like this is like an allied it, it it's it's like for him this is like the most friendly country that you could be in and retreating off it was a real like bummer for uh the germans at the time because this is like uh these are the people who are counting on them to like uh get them out liberate from the, them from the soviet union but he also um he goes into how the partisan warfare got in between, like agents from Moscow were, are able to send, uh, you know, all these kinds of um, black operators and things, or how the partisans will 
fire at them from like crowds of refugees to provoke a response or so and how it, it goes into this quite a bit but he he kind of blames the souring of relationships to the partisan activity from moscow and it, i mean it's a very much a frontline soldiers um account and he just kind of tells you what the troops are, are kind of thinking and it, it, it's not much of a filter to it and th it, th he does participate in some like anti-partisan operations because if you're going on leave as like a the german soldier at the time you know they, they really hate the the mps the uh the german mps the chain dogs and and so forth but they'll you know they'll kind of um corral you to into these uh you know you, you get voluntold to go on these details to like anti-partisan uh detail where where you like uh like the it'd be like the ass will make like a small task force of guys who are maybe going on leave coming from leave or so and but you, you know you're a german troop you have to help out with the this partisan problem so and, and it's a heavy you get a sense that this is a, a really like i mean you're fighting a really heavy guerrilla warfare right in back of uh your front line um in different uh spots but they but it it, it makes a it, it makes a lot out of um the landscape and you get a good sense of uh where these battles are like a lot of the battles that are taking place now are are going to be referenced in this book it's it's a lot of the same same territory same people except you, you know, the the way they'll describe the russians you know he just says that like in, even in the attacks you know they'll describe their faces as as horrible and They'll describe how they'll use, um, just send, just throw however many guys at their lines. And sometimes they can just mow everybody down, but sometimes, you know, they get, they get overrun. And I mean, he, he describes a very real force, which is, uh, this Russian artillery force and just this overwhelming, uh, like the numbers that they're getting swallowed by, by by this huge force that they're fighting that they can't like out fight that you know he just, he'll describe like these charges of like you know it's like it's like knights charging with like um tanks and so forth in the book and he'll just say it, it, it's however however heroic it all was it's, it's just the russians would just keep on coming just smashing everything and uh, I mean, it, it's extreme. Like the this book is, is a bloodbath, and toward towards the end, especially the, where the Germans are like, their lines are shattered and they're getting they're getting wrecked, and their their position is uh, about as bad as just nightmarish as it could be. Where um, and like even the Soviet planes are now just able to just blow apart crowds of refugees or fleeing uh german troops or fleeing like every just but the civilians are all all wrecked and and it, it just it, it becomes a really uh apocalyptic thing like where after they're in um you know they go into memel and then like east prussia and so forth and it, it describes and i mean you get a good sense of how the Russians attack and how like one thing leads to another and what it's it's like to survive these artillery like uh barrages with these uh like the Katyusha rockets and, and, and things like that uh, there's different parts of the book where they're like taking direct hits from artillery and everything's getting just completely um just buried and uh, like I mean, throughout the book, you know, they, they keep on uh, just just noticing that it, it's crazy that they're still 
they're still fighting and and so on but it it's it's not a cheesy or it, it the book isn't corny uh, at all and it's really funny it's super well written the guy uh he doesn't get too uh I mean, he doesn't get crazy, like, lyrical uh, and, like, philosophical with it. But, I mean, there, there's there's some of that. But it, it's a, it's really well written. I would take, um, I mean, this book is, is, is better. It's, it's just about the best World War II uh, book like this. or And I, I would say, I mean, people who've read this book are, are typically all about it but it it's not as well well known as it as it could be certainly being on the on the on the wrong side of the the war didn't help much but i'd all, i'd figure like a book like um like like Ernst, like storm of steel by Ernst young um that's not as good this book is a better book it, it's it's a, a similar premise memoir and similar in some ways, but this is really, I think next level in different ways that the, uh, like the book moves and so on. Even, uh, y you can get a good, I mean, like I've survived multiple, explosions and uh, like ieds and things that's the closest I, i've really come from like surviving an artillery strike but it you you get a sense of it w with just on a different scale with with everything in this book so it's it's like you're like whoa like getting that like over and over uh just a, a cascade of just a, explosions and so forth uh i've read i mean the author the author himself in the book says that he'd be content to just kind of think about his memories from the war like he's he's fine he he would he'd be fine to just just think about this stuff and he like he uh enjoys it or just goes over but definitely it's um about the some of the scenes are about as horrific as could be uh some of it that's maybe more inspiring like that, like they grow attached to a, a tank at some point where they're they're like pushing it because they they've grown so attached it, it, it's like it's like a, a panzer mark IV or something and but they're so attached to it they're they'll they'll push it into into battle or you know they wanted to go with them and there's a there's a lot of there's a, a just a lot of in, interesting combat things where you see the whole the artillery comes in the the luftwaffe comes in and or the you know you could see all the, the whole the pace of these battles and and or how they can figure out where their position is uh tenable or or not and they, they encounter a lot of weird scenes kind of like uh apocalypse now or something um to that effect i think this would be a good book to read for anyone i i mean really i i think just about anybody who likes kind of books uh like this i i'd say just in terms of good literature it it functions and then um if you like kind of World War II stuff, for sure, it, it's going to be a good memoir from a, a soldier from a important unit, an important division. And um, it's also just going to be work really good for just to pay attention to uh, stuff now and to get a, a sense of uh, the kind of combat we're seeing because in ukraine the scale is so so much higher than than um uh, what you see in in like uh afghanistan or something like that but i mean but you, you 
you could still figure out in some to some length of it, but just the scale in in, in this book and what's being described in is the Eastern Front combat. Like the author, he kind of he he mentions how they um. You know, like like the object of he says like the object of like a, a murder mystery just seems so trivial going forward, like because he's just seen just just people being killed just like over and over. Where there's parts in the book, I mean, they're retreating and people can just get designated to just um kind of stay back and just dig a shallow trench and just just slow the Russians down just a bit, and the Russians are just this like an unrelenting thing in, in, in the book, the guy, he's very much, he still kind of thinks of himself. He still thinks of himself as, as like French. And in the book, when he, he finds out like France isn't really, um, you know, maybe the stuff about like the new Europe and so forth didn't pan out. And the French, there's fr like free French fighting against, uh, against them against germany and against uh you know he's in the german army but uh he's uh he's very <laughs> heartbroken and because he he is kind of about about france and it, it's kind of strange in that aspect of it but like the different troops you know he's with like prussians and so forth that look down on him but it it it, it it's it's it has good, very good character development, even for um, a war story like this, where you get to kind of know the different troops. The, there's like a core um, set of characters with, with uh, I mean, he, he does a really good job of just showing personalities and things like that, just uh, just like along with the, the whole war and everything. The guy... um. Obviously, the guy, he um, he survives. Spoiler alert! And he writes this book. But interestingly, he like at the, he's pretty much fighting on the Eastern Front the entire time. And then when when they make it to uh, the West, to you know, like they they're just they're just immediately going <laughs> to surrender. <laughs> And he, he says that when he first see like after seeing however many Russian troops and so forth, he he said the first time they spot spotted um British British soldiers, I mean, he said that he said it it, it seemed like it'd be like a crime to fire on, to just shoot at these guys because <laughs> they just seem so cheerful and everything. And but um uh, he said somebody somebody does, but they they cut it out. They they, they immediately just surrender to the the brands that they come across <laughs> but they, they just said it was just a, a world of difference and he said on the on the eastern front he said you just didn't see it you just did not surrender if you you know you figured if you tried you'd either get cut down by by the russians or you get cut down by you know your own guys would just cut you down um for the thought of <laughs> for the thought of it but it it's very tough uh combat really unlike uh unlike just by anything like uh, like any us troops have ever been been through at really any point because even you know the world war 2 american experience isn't as bad as how these guys had it but what it what it describes i mean he he says that at you know even at the worst you know they weren't really fighting you know they weren't fighting for the most um he says at one point his mom sends him a letter and just telling him not to not to show off or be heroic or to uh you know just just do your duty and and get to survive and so on but but he said it, it just the sentiment was so misplaced because at that point it was just a, a complete struggle for survival on a uh you know against all odds where you're um you know you're just motivated by pure fear and uh i mean just what what they were um 
we're dealing with. So <laughs> I mean, j just to survive on, uh, and they're just getting thrown across this whole front. So there's, there's not much, um, heroics or, or, or in a, in a sense, they were all, all, <laughs> they all had to have a fair share of, share of heroics, but not necessarily, um, anything beyond that at that point. And, you know, um, this is, this would be a good book for people to, to read just to, to get very serious about what we're dealing with right now with Russia and all that, when they start throwing their artillery down like they do, because the Russians, even if they can't maneuver so much, like, uh, you know, they, they, they could still throw their artillery down in much the same way that, that this book describes where it's just a, a cascade of uh, explosives, just like a, a, a moving wall of, just everything blowing up. And so it's not, it's not just some, um, some dumb, unthreatening thing to, to not worry about. And it's not just something that we could figure. There's just going to be no sweat to prevail over. It, it's really something that people need to, you know, if, if we're going to, if we're going to win, you know, you need to get together, get, uh, get it together. And certainly, uh, you see that the Germans didn't do that. <laughs> and this is a book of, uh, it's a book of defeat, but it's a very interesting book. Um, this particular edition, it, it, ha it, I don't know who the translator is. I imagine this book was written in French. There, it doesn't say any at anywhere. It just says the author. But this this exact edition is super well written. So whoever the translator is did a really good job. Like you really hear the author's voice kind of come out in the text. The pictures are a really good. Um, and I mean, they're pictures of the Gross Deutschland. In this scene, there's a few pictures. There's a few picture sections. But the author, um, I mean, he he just seems kind of he has like a real European voice, kind of a pan-European voice. Like, like it's like Tintin or something in the German army on the Eastern Front. It really reads like a, like a horrible adventure. Like, I mean, there, there's just so many colorful bits or like, they're like, you know, you meet like a, a stranded tank or something where <laughs> like you meet strange characters in the book. You meet strange, um, people who are, who are more or less in, interested in national socialism or whatever. And, uh, and you, you just meet a lot of different, um, so it, it's like a book where, Different things can happen that you don't necessarily expect. Like, uh, like, a, like, it's not like a Marvel movie where you kind of know the parameters of everything that will happen. The book, the book is really, it, it really is, just seems very, very raw, and it, it, it's an emotional book, and it. It it can it can be funny. It's not it's not entirely uh just a drab, you know, bloodbath of uh there's actually like some laugh out loud stuff in the book. Um but I think I think a lot of people will enjoy the book. I I recommend the book all the time because everyone who reads it um comes they people really like it. Everyone who reads it really likes it. Um, beyond that, yeah, I, I I would just say get. I would try try to get this copy. I don't know if other translations are as good or or what. I know the cover of this one looks kind of cool, and it's kind of what I think of. It. I've only really. I I always buy the like if I buy a gift for I buy the same one. This is the same one I had for Christmas. 
that the um it just and some of the other ones have like a, a, a they'll have like a SS guy on the cover, and that just bugs me because the guy in the book is not in the SS. There is SS in the book, but stuff like that just kind of bugs me for like uh the cover of the book. But I'm, I definitely recommend this book. Just brush up on all things. Um, you really get a, a good sense of the landscape and, and this kind of Eastern Front, Eastern Front kind of combat from from reading this book, The Forgotten Soldier, which covers it covers quite a lot of um, like fighting the Russians across across Ukraine, and there just there, there's a lot to it to that um to that end there's a a lot to kind of ponder and it, i mean it it's anecdotal stuff but that's um that's the really fun stuff and this book is, is like uh i mean filled with great great anecdotes and and things like that but yeah i definitely I definitely recommend this book. Check it out. It's The Forgotten Soldier by Guy Sajer. The author of this book just died like um, a year or so ago. So he, he'd been around for a while. And he was like a French um, like com comics artist. He would draw comics and, and things like that. I think there's a the, he drew a, a cover of this book that looks cool. It's actually in the book, but the, um, I don't know, uh, as far as I know, this is the only, like, book, uh, of his you can get, and I don't think his comics have English translation, but th this is, it, it, it is just about, I would recommend this book, as far as, like, a, a single soldier's war, war experience, it's a very colorful experience for, um, for World War Two, and just especially because this is this is exactly what where we're we're fighting right now, where we have the Ukrainians and uh, we're sending German tanks, so on and so forth. So hopefully this, this time it goes goes better. But this, this this gives a good like worst case scenario where they just retreat across the entire thing and they're just the Russians are killing everybody, and I I, I should point out that he mentions in the book that like they're um they're uh they're trying I mean throughout the whole retreat as as horrible as it could, as it could be, you know they just there's people who will just commit suicide or or, or just die, but nobody even really considers um well let's just negotiate <laughs> let's surrender to uh russia and things will go well because he said i mean by that point like he's we know how how cruel of a of a nation uh we're dealing with how cruel you know like from from his perspective from what he's dealing with it he's there there's just there was no question you know he's just You'd almost, he says, you'd almost rather just capitulate at that point. But even at that point, like, um, people just weren't, weren't really thinking it because, uh, the Russians were just known as just so brutal. Um, so it, it's, it's something maybe for people to consider now that, you know, there, there is a reason why you don't just, uh, just, just figure, just surrender to Russia and just, just let be at the, just see how that goes. But, I mean, as far as these guys go, they definitely, these guys, <laughs> they fought to the death, <laughs> and they, I mean, there, there's parts in the book that are uh, just awe-inspiring stuff, where they're going into battle with the. Uh, you know, they're they're firing the tanks up the front. I mean, to me, this stuff like like after uh, being being in battle, you know, 
and things like that. Like I, I like the feeling of it, and I, I love the feeling of like firing up armored vehicles and columns, uh, moving in. And so, <laughs> I love, I love to go over, you know, re read the stuff, and but yeah, that that's that's about uh. I mean, there, there's a ton you can go over. I could read um, selections out of this book, especially. I, I mean, the, there's there's passages of the book that I, I really like, but there's just so much we can go over, and uh, you don't just just ought to read uh, just read it for yourself. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> anyhow, yeah, that's all I got. Go get the get this book. <laughs> it's, it's very, it's a very good book. It'll educate you on uh, Eastern Front warfare. It's a better book by it's a better book than Storm Storms of Steel by Ernst Younger. This is a really great book. Um, check it out. All right.